I can't remember the figure Blake mentioned yesterday how much money is going to be cut from this budget, but there was a school board meeting last night here in Wayne County, and they're all waiting to see what the legislature does. And, again, they're talking about a $5 million shortfall here for Wayne County if the cuts go as planned up in the state. So a lot of people are going to be hurt once these cuts take place, but uh, due to this coronavirus, it uh, looks like they have no choice. Yeah, and I, I wish, um, appreciate the feds, uh, stimulus package towards the states. They're sending significant amounts of money, but there's so many strings attached. Uh, we, I wish they would let us make up for some of this, allow us to make up for some of this shortfall. They're, they're allowing, uh, millions and millions of dollars to be spent on coronavirus related uh, expenses we, but those aren't the expenses we have. The the problem we have is the income shortfall. So uh, maybe if they hear from the states that they'll they'll change that because, um, frankly, this I mean that's not where the loss is always. We've obviously spent some, but not not at those those thresholds. Well, the feds all they do is fight. You know, <laughs> everybody keeps talking about the second stimulus. But uh, they can't seem to agree on anything up there. So hopefully, when the legislature gets together, it's not going to be. I asked Blake, you know, how he thought it was going to go. I said, "You think it's going to go smoothly? Do you think it's going to be back and forth, a bunch of bickering?" So how do you think it's going to go when they get up to Atlanta? Oh, that is a good question. Um, it's it's going to be tough. And the Senate met yesterday. You might have saw some of those news reports and. Uh, some tough statements coming out, um, especially from the area of education, because 14% would be a huge hit, but if the money's not there, I, I don't know what else to do um, except to make it equitable and to make it as close to 14% as you can all the way across the board. And as it, Blake explained, you know, the top five or six agencies make up almost the entire budget anyway, so I don't know. I uh, There was some really good positive signs yesterday economically. Of course, the stock market went up, and and one of the things that our state economists uh, and the OPB directors look at, and they say it's one of the strongest indicators, is consumer confidence, and that shot up way yesterday. So hopefully people are... Um, and the reason they say that, because even if, if everybody were to open up like 100% and you, and you remove every single restriction, you know, social distancing, no masks, everything, if you removed all that and consumer confidence is there, it doesn't matter. On the other hand, if you added twice as much restrictions and consumer confidence was an all-time high, then the economy would bounce back immediately. So, um, so anyway, that was, that was, several fronts of good news yesterday. Again, every time I have you or Blake or Stephen on and I ask, you know, what are the constituents calling and asking you about, you know, is everybody getting their 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 money that they're supposed to be getting, their unemployment, you know, what, are you, what are you hearing, what are the major concerns that your constituents are calling you about? Yeah, um, I mean, this is kind of a, probably a typical day. Uh, Got three phone calls yesterday. Two of them were unemployment related, and one was um, landlord renter rentee. Uh, not sure if I can do anything about that, but well, I'll reach out to them today. That I didn't get those messages till last night. Um, but the unemployment seems to be the biggest issue, and when I follow up and check on those cases. There's, in a sense, there's nothing wrong with them. Like they're in the system, they, they're um, they're not being held up for any reason. It's just the backlog is is so great. You know, we went from a three percent, the lowest unemployment record in Georgia in January to the highest in an eight to ten week period, and the Georgia Department of Labor over the years have been cut in staff. Um, so they're, they're just overwhelmed. 
to give you one example, uh, the newspaper in Chattanooga County called me yesterday because usually they can go to a website and get their own figures. They could not get the unemployment figures for April. And usually that's done by, you know, the 10th or 15th of May. And so when I called the Georgia Department of Labor, they said um, they just can't get to it. They're, they're trying. And between handling the claims and, and doing individual statistics, they're just, they're just flat overwhelmed. Yeah, Blake said the same thing. He said that's the issue he keeps hearing about. But at Washington Nationwide, that's the issue with a lot of people. You know, they were sitting around waiting for money to come that they didn't get, so they had to go back to work and they wanted to open up their business. So a lot of people, that's why that hairdresser that wound up going to jail, that's what she said. She, you know, she said, look, you're sitting around waiting for the money and all of a sudden the money doesn't come. you, you got to make a decision. you got to go to work and feed your family or are you going to just starve to death? So that's why she said that she opened up her business. So. It just seems to be a big issue all across the country. You know, they say you're going to get the money, but the money doesn't come. So, what are you going to do? Yeah, and as you know, the average American doesn't have, uh, you know, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're, they don't have a a two or three month supply to say um, to to make it to that next period. So it's it's been tough on a lot of people, but that's definitely the biggest issue I've been hearing on. Well, the state opened up early. I said still people have their doubts about that, but so far everything seems to be running pretty smooth in the state of Georgia. They don't want to seem to give the governor any credit for it. They keep saying you got to wait several months before it. They're already putting out the warnings about a spike, a second spike, things like that. Your thoughts on all that? You know, What's going to happen if that does take place? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, those are all just people speculating and opinions. I, um, all I can give you is anecdotal. I, my wife went and got her haircut yesterday, and she said it was very, very busy on the one hand because um, you know, that's important to folks, and they, they haven't been able to go in a long time. But she said even though it was busy, they were following every single rule. They had people six feet apart. Everybody had to wear a mask when you entered. She said it was very organized. Um, so I, as, as long as the businesses and the consumers are still following the guidelines, um, go spend some money. <laughs> yeah, I've been back eating at restaurants, but, you know, the restaurants I go to, like I said, they're practicing what they're supposed to be practicing. You know, one run a restaurant, every other table was empty. So, you know, but I believe if they were open, they couldn't fill them because, I mean, people are <laughs> eating in restaurants and trying to get back some type of normalcy. So I'm sure that business is still hurting because, like I said, they don't have every table full because they're doing the social distancing. But So I'm sure that's still hurting their uh, income. But uh, I wonder when they're going to, you know, raise or release those restrictions. When do you think they'll be able to do every table? Have you any idea? I don't know. We've got a, yeah, we've got a conference call tomorrow. Um, I think we'll hopefully find out some information Um you know, it's funny. Some of these fast foods, uh, like I talked to one here in Glendale. He had his best month ever, he said, last month. And, you know, it didn't exactly make sense to me because if you're, because they're drive-thru only, um, unless people are just tired of cooking. And uh, anyway, he, he's, and I've, so I've been kind of watching it just as drive-thru and, there's always a line circled around the building. And I, when I was in Jessup the other day, um, it was the same thing. It was like every fast food restaurant uh, was just lined up. So I'm thinking, well, if these people are all at work, do they normally carry the line? I don't know. But, he, but anyway, some of the fast food folks seem to be doing okay now. The restaurants that typically say like a Ruby Tuesday or Applebee's that you consider that um, most of the time you're going to dine in. Um, I haven't seen figures on those, but overall the restaurant industry does seem to be be down. Memorial Day weekend looked like a busy weekend all across the state. It looked like a lot of people got out and just you know ready to do something. So, your thoughts on how that went? Um, I haven't heard anything bad. I, I saw um, where, especially Hilton Head, uh, 
that had one of their busiest ever, and but they said no problems. People were staying away from each other. Um, so again, I, I think a lot of people who it's almost like they they thrive on uh, getting bad uh, predictions. It has just not happened, and, and you know that very first week when Kemp was one of the first governors to open back up the state. You know, I was I was a little leery. Um, but I think every week that we talk, it is proven that he, he made the right decision. Whether you, whether you like him or not, uh, we have not, you know, things have not gone downhill. So, and anyway, I, I think things are looking good, and I'm, I'm glad to see that the activity is picking back up. When the legislative session does resume on the 15th, you have 11 days, is that correct, to get the budget? But you don't have to be there that the is, entire 11 days, is that correct? That is correct. And, it's, it's, um, and generally, when it gets down to days 30 through 40, we don't do that, uh, you know, Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday because the volume of bills gets bigger and bigger. Um, and so... That could take up to three, four weeks, especially when you get down to days 37 through 40. Uh, those become an every other day. Um, so it could take us up to three weeks. And But then again, uh, you know, the Speaker and Lieutenant Governor has both said that many of the bills outside of the budget uh, will just have to wait till next year. So that will be interesting to see if, uh, if we will have a lot of bills because and, and you know this is really interesting and it, and it didn't hit even me I, I thought you know when, when we decided that this budget had to be thrown out my first thought was well the house is the appropriations body that, that we would start that process but technically and what's going to happen is so the house passed the budget that as we now know, is not going to work, but we didn't know that. So we sent that over to the Senate. So the Senate now has that budget. So now, for the first time that anybody can remember, they're really going to be take the first shot at it because usually the House spends more time on the budget than the Senate, then the Senate gets it, and then they massage it. Well, now that role has been reversed, and... As you know, Senator Tillery is chairman of that, so he's spearheading that. So now the Senate is is going to um, basically take the House budget and take 14 percent off of it, and and then it'll come back to the House uh, for review. So it's we're seeing a lot of first. Um, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of first when you get back to. Like I said, I talked to Blake yesterday. You know, when you get up there. All these senators and representatives, they're in that place where, you know, a lot of elderly gentlemen, so, you know, they're at risk. So I asked Blake, how's it going to go? Is it going to be like a regular session, or will they be in their office on computers? Or, you know, how how do you think it's going to work up there when you do get back to Atlanta? Yeah, and so the House and the Senate both have a committee working on uh, what the protocol is, and... From what it sounds like, uh, a lot of us are going to be watching the session from our office, which, and then when it comes time to vote, we'll go in one door and come out the other. Now, uh, for those that aren't familiar of, of how it works physically, the Capitol that has both chambers only has, I don't want to speculate, I, let me, I'll guess, 30 or 40, say, offices for legislators. Um, Blake and I are, are in that building so that, you know, 80% of the legislators are across the street in the legislative office building. And so that's going to you know, take time because they're, they're saying every time we come in, um, you're going to have to be screened with temperature and and they're, we got one memo about everybody's going to be tested. Um, so... Again, it's, it's going to be unusual. I have not heard. I, I know we, we're not going to do the PAGE program. 
we're not going to have, uh, they've asked for guests not to come to the gallery. I have not said anything about all the uh, lobbyists and, and folks who uh, professionally and non-professionally advocate because um, that, that fills up the building. I have not seen whether they're going to be allowed. So I don't see how they would with all the rules that are in place. So um, that's going to be different. So... Well, it's going to be fun to watch because it's going to be curious to see, you know, if you have a debate and there's a full room, you kind of get the feel where the consensus is. But if you're debating from your computer, <laughs> you don't really you don't really know where everybody stands. So <laughs> that seems yeah. to be an interesting concept. It'll be interesting how that, that works, you know. If you yeah. have the full session, you know, if somebody's up there arguing, you know, you kind of get a feel if they're agreeing or disagreeing with what he's saying. But if he's arguing from his computer... <laughs> You're kind of in the dark on where the majority stands. Yeah because, yeah, because what I've heard is we're not doing Zoom. We're actually, um, just like anybody can watch session, and, and a lot of folks do, we, we hear from them. Um, so we're, we would be watching from the same live stream that, that our constituents would be. And so that will be interesting. Like, usually if I have something to say, I just push my button and the speaker recognizes me. So what do I do? Do I text the speaker and say, hey, i got something to say, and then I leave my uh, office, go down to the podium and speak to an empty chamber, and everybody's watching me online? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm curious to see how it all works. Uh, like I said it doesn't look like it's been ironed out of how they're going to do it. It's like everybody, they're trying to come with these, it's just like all these major league sporting teams. You know, They're trying to come up with how they're going to do it, what they're going to do. Nobody seems to be able to agree, so... It's going to be curious to see how it works when they do get up there to the session. And like I said, how it how it functions, how it works, how quickly they can agree on the budget. What's the debate going to be? Is it going to be a sticking point? So I'm just curious to see how it all plays out once you do get back there on June 15th. So we'll be following closely, and, and this will be a great source of information. I hope that you and Blake and Stephen can call on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday during that session when it gets back and we can keep everybody up to date on what's going on. But it's going to be an interesting session. I think it's going to be a difficult session. As Blake said, it's going to be tough to make those cuts. But due to circumstances, as he said, it doesn't seem like they've got much choice. So it'll be interesting to see what the debate is and where where the cuts fall. Do they, call, do they fall across the board, or is there some maneuvering back and forth? So all that has to play out you know, once you get back into session. So... It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, going to be curious to see how it all plays out. Yeah, and as you know, when you've never done something before, you can have all the plans you want. And, you know, they might say, well, we're going to do it this way, and then you get up there and, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, what's interesting, too, some of these large companies like Spotify and Square, they've experienced this work from home has worked really well. And you can imagine these, all commercial buildings in downtown Atlanta, you can, you can imagine the leases they're paying. Well, those two companies specifically have said, hey, we're in the future, we're going to let our employees work from home. And so I, this whole situation has caused a you know seismic shift in just how people are thinking. And so it's it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we, you know, change stuff. Um, I mean, just socially. What if, you know, because, you know, what's interesting is because we're in session usually every January through March, which is kind of the height of um, the flu season, we, uh, we've we kind of gotten a habit of fist bumping or trying to the last couple of years. And so it'll be interesting to see what kind of changes you know, how business operate, how people agree each other, just, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be real interesting, like I said, but you got everybody watching because, like I said, our school board, just one school board, or all the school boards across the state, they have to plan their budget, and they can't plan their budget until you decide what the cuts are. So that's just one agency. That's education. There's all kinds of agencies across the board that the, these cuts are going to affect. So they're all sitting back waiting to see what happens and then adjust accordingly on how it all lays out. So 
it's going to be a very interesting session for sure. Again, it's expected to resume on June the 15th. Bill, I always enjoy you being here on Wednesdays with Workhiser. And again, if you go back to Atlanta, we wish you a safe trip. And I said, hopefully things will go smoothly, but it'll, you know, when you get a bunch of politicians in the room, you just have no idea how it's going to play out. So it's going to be must watch TV for sure. It's going to be fun to, <laughs> yeah. going to be interesting to watch. That's for sure. Yeah, and I will uh, make sure we send out the links and give y'all um, for your uh, listeners because I think it would be interesting for them to watch. Um, so we'll make sure we make that available as that that time approaches because I, I think your listeners would enjoy that. Okay. Again, Bill, thank you so much. Wednesdays with Workhiser, State Representative Bill Workhiser. Again, stay safe, and again, we appreciate you being here every Wednesday. All right. You and Johnson have a good one. Have a good one. And again, those come to State Representative Bill Workheiser. Got a few minutes left. Jonathan, I'm just curious. You know, that last night they had the school board meeting. They're talking yep. about putting the band back to yes. the original spot. You're, you've been in the band before. Your thoughts on, you know, what you. After they, the they, excitement. They, they, well, they talk about the volume and things like that. Like, does it make a difference that each seems like different band directors had different opinions on how the band how the you have a different you, you, it always seemed like you could hear the band across the way better well, each each stand hears the yeah. other band better because of the direction right. you're at but if you're in the crowd you know if you're just sitting in the crowd you you can hear it much more than when they're sitting at the end zone it's just going out in an open space it doesn't have anything really to reflect across it's got to go across the entire right. field well the best point i heard last night was the fact that when you had it where it used to be the, uh, yeah. the opposing band was straight across so it was kind of like the battle of the band yes so, yes there you go i mean it's like you know right. just like football teams compete the bands compete as well so it was easier to compete when you're looking them across the way than right in the end zone oh, yeah. you, you can't really tell where they're Thanks at to the so. excitement right so I like said the band requested they move back, so we'll see how it all plays out. But I think that's probably what's going to take place. And you know, they keep talking about who's going to be in the end zone. They could just get rid of those bleachers if they wanted to. I mean, make it a student section, make it additional make it student section, or, something. or just get rid of them all together. If, if yep. that's the, you know, if that's the, whatever. But it was interesting how many more said, meetings you know, before they make a decision? They're going to make a they're going to make a decision in June. They asked the superintendent yeah. to get together with the parties involved and get together and decide what they're going to do, but. The, the push is to get the band back to where they used to be. And you know, I think that's what they're – like Ray Davidson said, it seems like a reasonable request. He doesn't see why it would be a big issue not to move them back. So I mean, that's what the band wants. That's what the band boosters want. So I would think they're going to go along with probably possibly move them back to that section of the stadium. So I was just curious, you being a former band yeah, I think member it would, it would in the band. Add to, the, add to the excitement, being in the crowd. Being in the crowd. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and uh, – like band director McGee said about the, the logistics of doing it, I think it works right. out better that way to get because you can get in there where the track used to right. be and then come in and get. So you said that was always easier for y'all to do it that yeah. way. Yeah, all right. So just curious conversation last night at the board meeting. I said it's the second time they've discussed the, you know, what the band's going to do, but last night the band director was there <coughs> and the, the current band booster president Farrell Cooksey and the former band right. booster president Jason Weaver yeah. all requesting that they move back to where they were before. So be interesting. But like I said it was interesting that Jay said that the reason they moved in the first place was Ken Widener was the band director. He requested they move right. there. So mm-hmm. he yeah. thought the, but they keep talking about the sound, the, you know, how it travels, where it goes. I was just curious. It goes out in the middle of nowhere and actually it cuts you down because if the band is in that or the, the team is in the end zone, then that band has to stop playing entirely uh-huh. because you're going to distract the players. Uh-huh. One thing they said last <coughs> night was I had a heavy idea. They said that several of their instruments have been damaged with the football coming in after the extra points and the field goals. So and that's possible. They said, yeah. they, had, they said they had three instruments that were damaged due to the. Uh-huh. So you won't have that problem. <laughs> a seven air and throw. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Either way, though, you know, always a big part of, like you said, the battle of the bands. It's a big part of the experience. Right. Like Ray Davidson said, it is a big part of the entire right. I mean, Friday Night yeah. Lights experience. It's definitely the bands, you know, the band, the cheerleaders, the major hits. That's all part of it. You know, everybody's involved. So, like I said, that's the request. We'll follow it, but they are expected to make a decision at the June meeting. So, again, if you missed it on the news, you can catch it again this afternoon. Uh, both the uh, band director... Sean McGee and or Deshaun McGee and uh, Ray Davidson comment on it 
on the newscast. So. Right, yeah. Okie doke. That's going to do it again tomorrow. We've got a uh, special guest, uh, Mr. Keith Higgins, <coughs> is attempting to get enough signatures on the so he can be on the ballot as an independent candidate in the DA's race. Currently, he's not on the ballot, but he's hoping to be there by November. Yeah. We'll get an update on how that's going with this coronavirus thing. I would think it'd be hard to get around and get signatures, but we'll ask him that, ask him why he wants to be an independent candidate, not a Democratic or Republican candidate, because he'd already be on the ballot if that was the case. So we'll get all that information tomorrow from him in studio tomorrow on the World Famous Pitch and Bob Show. And then Friday, we'll be talking to Tommy Palmer on the oh, Pitch great, and Bob Show. Great. So. Again, that's the lineup for the remainder of the week. As the weekend quickly here, short week with the holiday on Monday, so it's already Wednesday. Yeah, We're already halfway through the week. Hard to believe that. All right, world famous Butch and Bob show on WIFO this morning, brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply. Good morning, eight twenty-seven. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020 at Wayne County High School. The following businesses, individuals, and organizations wish you good luck and good fortune in the years to come. Calvary Baptist Church salutes Lily Adams, Janice Altman, Blair Carey, and Hannah Landon. Corson's Carpet and Vinyl on the Savannah Highway would like to congratulate all 2020 graduating seniors. Sheriff John and Marsha Carter would like to congratulate the following graduating seniors, Gracie Carter, Hannah Wise, Blakely Ray, Mark Ogden, Seth Henderson, J.C. O'Quinn, and all graduating seniors.